Imagine your coffee mug or the chair you're sitting on has feelings. It sounds far-fetched, right? But there's a serious idea in philosophy that suggests something along those lines. It's called panpsychism, and while it doesn't claim your coffee mug is secretly thinking deep thoughts, it does propose that even the tiniest bits of matter might have some tiny glimmer of awareness. Today we'll explore what panpsychism is and why thinkers like Philip Goff and David Chalmers are talking about it. Panpsychism, from Greek pan equals sign all, psyche equals sign mind, is the view that consciousness is not exclusive to brains or living creatures. It might be a fundamental feature of the universe itself. In other words, consciousness could be as basic to reality as things like mass or electrical charge. Philosopher Philip Goff puts it succinctly, Panpsychism is the view that consciousness is a fundamental and ubiquitous feature of physical reality. That means every particle, every atom carries some extremely rudimentary form of experience. Not that an electron has thoughts or emotions, but according to panpsychism, it might have a faint spark of what it's like to be an electron. This idea isn't entirely new. It harkens back to ancient philosophers, even Plato entertained something like it, and thinkers such as psychologist William James and philosopher Bertrand Russell considered versions of it. But panpsychism has gained fresh attention in recent years, especially after Goff's 2019 book Galileo's Error reignited the conversation. Why would anyone propose that consciousness is everywhere? The answer starts with what David Chalmers famously called the hard problem of consciousness. This hard problem asks, how and why do physical processes in our brains produce subjective experience? We can map brain activity and pinpoint which neurons fire when you taste chocolate, but that doesn't explain why tasting chocolate feels like something. Neuroscience hasn't answered how the electrical signals in a brain translate into the rich inner movie of our lives. As one philosopher put it, somehow we feel the water of the physical brain is turned into the wine of consciousness. In other words, turning matter into mind seems almost miraculous, a leap we can't yet explain. This conundrum is what Chalmers dubbed the hard problem of consciousness. This is where panpsychism comes in. If it's so hard to explain how consciousness appears out of non-conscious matter, panpsychism suggests flipping the script. Maybe consciousness didn't appear at all. Maybe it was there from the start. In the words of one science writer, panpsychism proposes that mindedness was there all along, residing in the fabric of the universe. Instead of trying to pull a rabbit, mind, out of a hat, matter, Panpsychism says the rabbit was hiding in the hat the whole time. Even Chalmers, who coined the term hard problem, has been open to this radical approach. He's entertained the idea that consciousness might be a fundamental aspect of reality, essentially embracing a form of panpsychism. In a TED talk, Chalmers went so far as to suggest that a photon, a particle of light, might have some element of raw, subjective feeling, some primitive precursor to consciousness. This doesn't mean a photon has a mind like ours, it means there could be a very basic spark of experience accompanying even a particle of light. It's a provocative thought. Even the building blocks of what we consider inanimate nature might have the tiniest glimmer of inner life. Philosopher Philip Goff is one of the leading voices reviving panpsychism today. He argues that part of the problem is our scientific approach inherited from Galileo. Goff likes to illustrate it with a thought experiment. If Galileo time-traveled to the present, and heard we still can't explain consciousness in physical terms, he'd likely say, of course you can't. I designed physical science to deal with quantities, not qualities. In the 17th century, Galileo kick-started modern science by focusing on measurable things like size, shape, and motion. He intentionally set aside qualities like color, sound, and taste, the things that reside only in consciousness, as Galileo put it. This move was brilliant for physics but it left subjective experience out of the scientific picture. Physical science was never designed to tell us about the redness of a sunset or the pain of a headache. So, Goff argues, as long as we ignore those inner qualitative aspects, we'll never fully explain consciousness in terms of physics alone. According to Goff, this is Galileo's big error and why purely physical theories struggle with consciousness. If we want a complete understanding of reality, we may need to put consciousness back into our fundamental picture of the world, rather than treating it as an accidental byproduct. Panpsychism does exactly that. It says consciousness is a basic part of nature, not something magic that only brains produce. Goff makes a compelling case that this isn't as crazy as it sounds. He points out that an increasing number of thinkers, philosophers, and even some neuroscientists are warming to this idea. 
seeing it as perhaps our best hope for solving the problem of consciousness. If matter has an inside perspective, however simple, in addition to its external physical properties, then the gap between mind and matter might not be as vast as we think. Goff even predicts that in 20 years' time, people will find it crazy that we ever dismissed panpsychism so quickly. In short, he believes the idea of consciousness pervading the universe could be the key to finally understanding our own minds. Panpsychism is still a minority view, but it's gaining attention because it offers a bold solution to a problem that has stumped thinkers for ages. By positing that consciousness is everywhere, it neatly sidesteps the question of how consciousness emerges from non-conscious matter, because in this view, matter was never truly non-conscious to begin with. It's a mind-bending proposal that blurs the line between the physical and the mental, and it has big implications. Instead of a universe that is 99.999% dead, in sentient stuff with a few pockets of life that mysteriously woke up, panpsychism imagines a universe that was awake in some basic sense all along. Importantly, modern panpsychists don't claim that atoms have complex minds, plans, or thoughts. The consciousness of a particle, if it exists, would be extremely rudimentary, something like a tiny spark of experience far, far simpler than the consciousness of a human or even a dog. The idea is that these countless tiny conscious sparks could, in principle, combine in complex systems, like a human brain, to form the rich awareness we know. How small bits of awareness might combine into a larger unified consciousness is an open question, the famous combination problem, which some say is panpsychism's own hard problem, but that's a technical debate for another time. What's noteworthy today is that respected thinkers are giving panpsychism serious consideration. Renowned neuroscientist Christoph Koch, for example, has said that if we accept consciousness as a fundamental, irreducible phenomenon of nature, then it is a simple step to conclude that the entire cosmos is suffused with sentience. In other words, if consciousness isn't just an artifact of human brains, but something that can exist in principle anywhere, why not everywhere? Even within philosophy, surveys show a small but growing minority of philosophers are open to views like panpsychism over traditional materialism. And as we've seen, thinkers like Goff and Chalmers are actively discussing it, hosting workshops and writing books to flesh out how this perspective might reshape science and philosophy of mind. Panpsychism offers a fascinating if mind-boggling perspective. Consciousness might be a fundamental feature of reality, present even in particles and atoms. This idea challenges our intuitive division between mind and matter, suggesting that in some form, mind is matter, and matter has mind. It flips the conventional story. Instead of consciousness being a late-arriving fluke in a lifeless universe, consciousness could be woven into the fabric of existence from the start. This view, if true, would deeply reshape how we see ourselves in relation to the world around us. We would no longer be isolated islands of awareness in an ocean of dead matter, but part of an unbroken continuum of consciousness that spans the cosmos. Of course, panpsychism is provocative and not without controversy. Many scientists and philosophers remain skeptical, pointing out that we lack direct evidence for consciousness in atoms and questioning whether the theory can be tested. It's a radical departure from the common assumption that if you gather enough inert matter in a brain, then you get consciousness. Yet, by daring to think outside that box, panpsychism has succeeded in reinvigorating the conversation about one of science's greatest mysteries. It forces us to ask, could it be that the universe itself at some level knows or feels?